Hi, this is Wilna and I'm just welcome. Welcome to my live chat. If you are in here right now with me, if you're watching later, well, welcome to you too. Um, I'm just so excited to bring you another art channel video. You can see behind me the messes that I'm making and I'm just loving, I'm loving this process and, and it's such good heart therapy for myself. And that's one of the reasons why I really just want to do it and pay it forward, you know, to you as well. Um, I, I want to show you the page we're going to make today. And I'm going to talk a lot in the video about 20 seconds of bravery because that was the challenge for me in the last two pages that I made was struggling with, um, with where I wanted to go um, and then I had to take some risks and, and it's not a big thing, it's not a big deal but for me, you know, when something is really pretty, you don't want to spoil it but the only time that we really learn is when we take that extra step and my thinking was continually, and I'll talk about this more, um, was um, it's only paper you can turn the page, you can do it and again, or, you know, um, so I, I really just want to encourage you, um, when you watch with me, you know, take a little bit of risk. So this is the page we're making and I, I like it. I, I think it's a very happy page. I love the red and the pinks that's happening on this page. You know, the little details, lots of layers. Um, like I said in the pre previous video, this series feels so different for me. It feels almost unfamiliar. Um, but in a, in a sense, maybe they look the same like my pages do. But the process felt a lot different for me. So um, let's get chatting and let's get going. And, and if you have any questions, just ask me in the chat or if you're watching later in the description below. And uh, I'm saying hi all the way from Canada and uh, enjoy, enjoy the video and show me your pages. Bye. So the first thing we will be doing is we're going to prime our page and or your book or whatever you're using. And I, this to me is just non-negotiable. I have done art journaling on unprimed pages and the results are just not the same. What the gesso does is it provides a little barrier between the paper and the media and it prevents the media to seep into the porousness of the paper. So that's why I like to do it and especially when you work in a book you don't want the pages to bleed onto the next or through the pa paper and that's the other reason why I also like to leave a little white border around the edges of my page it's just so that the paint doesn't flow into the next page and then it, everything sticks together and it's just a big mess. In this series, I start off with a black background and I actually have a little tutorial or a workshop available called Starting Points where I um, just address that whole idea of the white page and how intimidating it can be. That workshop is on special just by the way. And with this, the other ones I started off with black chalkboard paint and black um, watercolors. With this page, I'm actually doing acrylic paint. So I'm using the Liquitex Basics and I'm just painting a black background with my favorite brush. And so the you can see I put the paint on the top of the page. And it's fairly thick here and that's the only paint I'm going to add to my page. So next up I'll be um, just using a wet brush and just almost create a wash of the acrylic paint towards the bottom of the page. So I'm just washing my brush, wetting it and then painting over the acrylic paint so that the little bit of pigment gets on the paintbrush. And that's enough for me to just... To, carry on further and further and you can see it's almost like a wash towards the bottom of the page. The second step in all my original pages for the series is collage. So I'm just using a piece of pattern scrapbook paper and I'm just tearing it up. I like the pattern and I think it's a very interesting starting point you know and I'm just going to stick it down with Mod Podge. 
So I'm adding a little bit of Mod Podge to the back of the uh, cardstock and you can see I'm it's not too thin, it's not too thick, it's just right. You don't want to use too little, otherwise it won't stick. So I've learned that, you know, this nice um, fair amount of, of Mod Podge is exactly what you need. And I'm just going to stick it down and just paint over it. So just make sure your background paper is quite dry. Otherwise you will smudge and it will just be a, a mess. And that's the paradox, I think, of making art journal pages. You, you make messes, but it's intentional messes. And the one thing that I actually don't like, you see like that, is unintentional messes. I just don't like it. Maybe, I, maybe my right brain um, or my left brain is still functioning after all. So I'm going to let that dry. And then the next thing is gelatos. So we are going to be just coloring with gelatos like little kids. And it's so much fun. You know, I, I was so happy when I, remi when I remembered. I have gelatos in my cupboard and I can use them. And I'm always looking for new art journal medium and... Um, and you know ideas and and things to try out and so I was so happy when I actually discovered them and I don't think I might be wrong but I don't think I've used them on any original layouts you know um, definitely not recently you know uh, you can see actually how well the gelato shows up on the background the black background so it's it's quite nice and uh, Orange and yellow is my favorite colors to use on this little series. And then I pair it with pinks. And I find that that color combination is, is really nice. This page is actually one of my favorites that I made for this little series. And I just love the way it turned out. So it's, but again, you know, it's a journey. So always... Always remind yourself when you're busy making messes and you look at your page and you feel like nothing can bring it back from the edge of extinction, then just remember it's about the process. Art journaling is about the process. The healing of the heart is in the process and it's not about the end, end destination. Don't do what I do there. Use clean water. Okay, so... I'm a very bad example for all the students that's watching. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm wetting my brush and I'm just painting over the gelatos and that's a way to make them set. So that's actually quite nice. So I just used a little bit of water. And another thing is coloring with gelatos on wet pap paper is also a good thing. So you might want to try out, try it out. So take a brush um, that's just with a little water paint on your page and then color with your gelatos. And that's also a nice way you can see the color shows up a lot better. Okay, people, so I just want to say at this point, as I'm narrating this video, I'm happy to report that I got a jelly plate. So it arrived in the mail yesterday and I'm chomping at the bits to start using it and just to play with it. So that is my next endeavor into art journaling is I will explore the joys of the jelly plate. But I had this very stiff um, piece of uh, uh, what do you call it? Perspex. And that's what I'm using now for, you know, just to do a little bit of monoprinting. It didn't work out great, but that's fine. It's a learning curve for me. And, you know, sometimes it's like photography. People say, you know, um, anyone can take good photos and you probably can. But having the right equipment really, really makes a difference. You know, I found that when you paint with... Um, super cheap acrylic paints you will not have the same outcome as when you use a heavy body or a more professional grade and equipment does make a difference 
So like I said, this didn't work, work great. My camera is on autofocus, which is weird. So I'm sorry about the camera doing that. And there you can see it. I like the texture and I like the mark making. And that is maybe what this is all about. It's just the mark making and the texture. And, and if you think about it like that, then it's a success. If you think about it in monoprinting terms, it's a total and utter failure. And I honestly do not have um, the right tools to do it right. So, Okay, so I'm almost done with that. And yeah, it didn't work right. So I decided just to roll with my roller. And I'm just going to um, use the roller directly on the paper. Other thing with I think that might be a little challenge. I'll, f I'll try it out and let you know. Uh, a little challenge with the monoprinting on books is because the books are so thick and uneven and it's not flat, you know. So I think that might be a little problem. So this is, this looks nice. I like the graphic look. I like the fact that the, the rolled paint allow a little bit of transparency behind it so that's that's actually quite nice so okay and then next up uh the fun start so this is where you know i talked about in the um introduction about uh those little bouts of courage and bravery and i know i know this is just art it's just paper it's nothing spectacular you know but you know, art, art is all about, oh, not yet, but art is all about taking risk. And I think just as you grow as an athlete, when you push yourself beyond your limits, I think when you do art and you try new things that is, that makes you feel a little nervous, that's when you really grow also in your creative life. This is a stencil by Martha Stewart. So... I love it. I bought it at Michael's at the discount price and I'm just spreading some light molding paste through it and I'm just making sure that I'm covering everything. There you go. And then you can just use your finger and smooth out the pieces that shouldn't be there while it's still wet, right? And now you just want to let this dry. Right, so I'm going to use uh, my Martha Stewart dark green. I don't, I'm not sure what color it is. And I'm going to spray it through my stencil. And so this is interesting. I was thinking as I'm doing this, okay, it's pattern on pattern. So it's, it's an irregular pattern on a irregular pattern almost, so to speak. You can see I use paintbrush handles just to hold my stencil down and I'm just moving it and then spraying spritzing actually is what I do if you look at the type right hand corner you'll see that little image and those are stencils that's available for you for free to download from my site iHot Studio if you click on that little eye it will take you to the it will take you to my website and you can just download it. You just have to buy it for zero dollars and zero cents and you can download it. Okay, so now I'm going to add, well not add my image, but I like to place it to know what what I should do next. It's almost like the image or a little bit of a roadmap for me, whether it's color or inspiration or, you know, I'm feeling it out like what color do, do I want to add and in this case, I want to use this beautiful turquoise deep acrylic ink. So I love using acrylic ink over the light molding paste because when you add water, it settles into the crevices and dries a little darker. And I just like the effect a lot. So I'm adding a little bit of water to a, a, a brush and I'm just going to paint um, this beautiful, delightful blue, green, it's not really blue, it's, oh, it's just stunning. And I'm just going to add it to 
my light molding pa um, paste area. So again, just adding more water and painting over the light molding paste. And there you can see what I mean when it settles into those little crevices. It's just stunning. And I'm just going to catch that little bit of drip off. So now I'm just going to let this dry, I think. And... And this is where, you know, you get to a point where you're like, okay, I have no idea how to go forward with this page. And it happens. Um, adding a tiny bit of the, um, I think it's a Prussian blue or the purple, just a darker shade. I think it's purple, deep violet probably. And just seeing, you know, here and there. Uh, for a little bit of contrast and now you can just use your embossing tool to dry and once it's dry it's a little bit um, less vivid right but that's fine we will get to that and now I'm going to add my leaves and again this is part of the free download um, so it's a digital file that you can make into a cut file if you have a cutting machine like a Cricut or a or a silhouette cameo, which is the one that I use. Okay, so now I'm just dabbing a little bit of light green paint through uh, the stencil. And I know more or less where I want my illustration to be. So I want the leaves to come out of the florals. So that's my thinking. Okay, I'm just putting the book flat. So there, and I just want it to look like it's coming out of that illustration. And just doing a little bit of darker paint, lighter paint. You can see I have three shades of the same green on that little palette. And I'm just using them. However, you know, if it's a dark area, I'll use light. If it's a light area, I'll use a little bit darker. And that's how, you know, I just carry on. So looking at my image right now, it, it's a lot, um, it's very uh, muddy and that's what I don't like particularly. And so I always get to that point where you feel like your page is at a utter disaster and sometimes you feel like it needs an intervention, but you don't know what. And this is where um, I think um, this will help because you you take these little risks and you try and and sometimes it pays off big time and it works dramatically and beautifully and sometimes it just doesn't work at all. I'm taking the the vivid green paint dropper and I'm just painting around the little leaves. I am speeding up my video slightly because this part is um, fairly simple, you know, so I'm not really working this fast in in real life. So, and then you can use the same paint dropper just to paint uh, a little bit of detail in. You can also use a fine brush, you know, but you know me, I'm a little lazy. So, and now I'm just... Um, Remember that pink color we mixed in the previous video? So this is what I'm using here. And again with the paint dripper, I'm just painting and almost drawing with it. That part's not quite dry, so I'm just dabbing it. And I love the pink over the orange. And using your finger to paint, it's a very fun exercise in mark making. So you can see I like that little bit of textured light pink that's showing up there and now I'm using the paint dripper and I'm just making little marks with that light that pink and and you know and the, this is the joy of acrylic ink it it really shows up um, it's very opaque so nothing is and you know you can see everything beneath it a few paint drips so I'm holding my paint dropper quite high and then you get the best splatter like I can be a splatter analyst like Dexter. So you can just hold it high. And then I'm removing my um, illustration and I'm dripping paint on that side too. 
And then I thought, what if I add a little bit of red? So I'm very, very cautious when I drip red paint because it can look a lot like blood. But in this case, I found that if I drip it into the pink, it would look nice. So I love, love, love that. So it doesn't look like blood. I think it doesn't. Maybe like bullet holes, but I don't know. Um, and this is how this page is coming together. And I really love it uh, a lot. I, um, oh, I, I like a, a clean background and this is what I'm doing. I'm just painting my, my border in a little bit, smoothing it out, you know, the paint and just painting it white and the joy of using, um, Titanium white is it's very opaque. So the heavy body Liquitex heavy body you can see there. Oh, probably you didn't see. Yeah, I finished painting my border white, and the what I wanted to say the titanium acrylic paint is very opaque. The heavy body one. So I would always suggest if you use the Liquitex basics, buy one heavy body acrylic paint white because that will really make uh, a big difference. You can mix in paints and you get that opaque look that you want, if you want to cover everything up underneath it. And now I'm going to add my illustration with a light, with some Mod Podge. If you don't have Mod Podge, you can use any medium. So a matte medium, even a gloss medium, you can use, um, Varnish won't, I don't know if varnish will work, I, d I highly doubt it, but medium is almost like Mod Podge. I like Mod Podge because um, I like this, it has a sealant effect. So especially when you paint over your illustration, then if you make a mess on top of it, you can just wipe it off, you know. It's also a good idea if you struggle with sticking things down just to maybe spritz the back of your illustration with a little bit of water and that way the Mod Podge will almost um, be absorbed a little easier through the paper and it will stick better. Just make sure everything is dry. You can see my paint is wet still on the page and I know I have to be so careful otherwise it's going to smudge all over my illustration, which is not dry yet. And sometimes when you stick something down over texture, like light molding paste, you, I just have, you just have to hold it a little bit. It, it settles down eventually. So now I'm just painting a little bit of Mod Podge over my illustration. The printer I use ha you, um, works with pigment ink. So what I like about that is that pigment ink does not smudge and you can paint over it. If you use something like a dye ink in your printer, it might smudge. So just be careful. Okay, I'm loving how this page is coming together. I like the pinks with the greens and the yellows. And I just, and I actually love the little bit of yellow that sticks through at the top of the pages. So I decided to um, work with that part a little bit more and, and just add a little bit of, you know, drama there. You know, you don't always know how it's going to turn out, but sometimes you just have to go for it. And if you feel like um, too attached to any original page, that's usually a sign that you have to do something dramatic. And even if it's just to stretch your own creative muscle um, to just try something. And if it doesn't work, who cares? You know, it, it just means that um, you... You took a risk, it didn't pan out, and then you try again. The The good thing with uh, th the way I art journal is that you can't really make a mess too badly. I, you know, there's nothing that white acrylic paint or baby wipe can't fix. 
So that's that's my motto as well, you know, is just to to go with the flow a little more. And I'm just adding a little bit of detail in. This is the best part of art journaling is just putting in the detail. And you can do um, so much more, you know, I... Um, you can actually really detailed up those leaves a lot more than I'm doing. I'm using my favorite calligraphy brush. That's what I call it. Um, and just have a little fun with it. This is this is really nice. You once you start doing art journaling or painting, and you start with the and you start with your details, you'll know what I mean with how much fun it is to add these little detailed spots on your page and it just makes it so interesting I love working on my art journal pages with illustrations so I have just I'm addicted to it and I don't think I can make an art journal page without it it's almost like creating a little painting and I and I think the reason for it is because it just creates a little bit of a, um, a focal point for your art journal. Plus, you know, it's hard for some people. If you're a good artist, you can paint a face or a, a figure or something. But for the mere, you know, as mere mortals, I, it's it's not a, as easy, you know, just to duplicate that. So that's why I like to do illustrations and I like to make them available to you so that you can just print it, paste it and have something fairly similar. Um, even though when I teach art journaling in real time with, with students, actual students, I'm always jealous that their pages look so much better than mine, which is fabulous. I love it, you know. Okay, so now I wanted to bring back a little bit of the words that's almost disappearing. And I thought to myself, how, why not um, place the stencil over it and just spray it with a lighter color. And the only light color I had was, uh, was yellow. So I'm just going to cover up what I don't want any spray paint on. And I'm just going to reposition my stencil as good as I can use the bull clip to just clip it to it now I'm just going to move it slightly it doesn't have to be perfect but just more or less and I'm going to use the yellow Martha Stewart paint spray paint and I'm just going to spritz it and this is like I have no idea how it's going to look but it looked awesome I love, love, love this look. And that little bit of yellow is just exactly what my page needed. So now I'm just trying to find the right words for the right spot so I can reposition it properly. And then I'm just going to spray paint that part too. Again, using long, maybe I just used my finger. No, I didn't. And then I'm just going to spritz it again with a little bit of paint. There, I, just, I knew I sprayed my hand because I remember I had to scrub and scrub and scrub it. Okay, so I love this. I love that yellow. So it's layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. And that's what I love about this art journal page, if you look at the bottom left part of it, yeah, look, <laughs> then you can see the wash of the black is still showing through, you know, and, and that's something that I love. I like that the idea that every little part of this page can be a painting on its own. So if I were to cut up that page into squares of say three by three or four by four, each of them will be a little interesting painting and that's something that my art professor told us you know when I was in in university painting he always said that 
each part of your painting should be a painting on its own. And that was a, a thing that just stuck with me tremendously. Okay, and now I'm thinking um, that the final touch will be my journaling. And I'm actually just going to, I tried stamping with pink, it didn't work. And um, in the end, I just went with um, a white acrylic paint. And I'm just going to skip to that part and show you the final um, part, which is the journaling. Okay, I'm skipping and I'm using my fabric ruler here and I'm just going to just have a few lines that I want to draw so that I, when I write, I just don't go off script too much, off cue or however you want to call it, offline. <laughs> and I find that just a few lines is good enough for me. You can see I tried to stamp with the black, um, even with the black ink, it didn't show up really nice. And now I'm just going to use white acrylic ink. And I want to write a few verses regarding strength and strong, being strong. And that to me is something that's been very dear to my heart and something that I've needed. Like when I memorized all these verses years ago, never did I know that, you know, that how much I would need them in my life. So I, um, these two verses specifically out of Philippians is very close to my heart. I'll read it to you when I write them, but I like to just have a reference, um, just off totally off topic sometimes when I memorize a verse I you know you forget the little this and that and 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 you, you know so the, there are little words that that you leave out over time so that's why I like to just go to the bible app and just look at the actual verse so that when I write it I write at least write the right 100% correct part of it down Okay, so I have my paint in a little cup and now I'm just going to write. The first one is uh, Philippians 2.13 in the Amplified. It says, not in your own strength, for it's God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight and I just absolutely love that. And the second verse is Philippians 4.13. So it's 2.13 and 4.13, which reads, I have strength through Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I just love that. Um, so this is the two verses that I paint wrote, written on my journals and I actually like the white so just above my iPhone there you can see a white jelly roller and that is the pen that I recommend if you want to do journaling on 
on a dark page or a dark spot and you just need a, a pen that will show up. I actually went to Michael's one day and I bought all the white pens in the in the store, one of each, not all of them, just one white pen of all the categories. And I tried them out and this white jelly roller worked the best. But um, I wanted a little thicker look. So again, the white acrylic paint, uh, white acrylic ink is one thing that I will get if you are just starting out with art journaling. That's the one thing you want because it's so opaque and I love, love, love it. Right, here's my journaling is done and I'm just going to stamp the date. Like I've said in the previous videos, I like, I just decided I need to do this more. It's a habit that I developed when I was doing more scrapbooking, which I haven't done a lot of lately, which I should probably get to back to. And now I just want to do the title. So the word strength up there is not really showing up. So I'm just going to paint it back with my white brush and I truly wish that I could manufacture those that brush <laughs> um, it's just it just uh, it's just the perfect calligraphy brush and I have no idea where I got it or how it became like that probably over time okay so again just let the paint dry and then you're all done and thank you so much again for hanging out with me with chatting with me um i just appreciate it so much so i have one more video that's coming out in this little series and i'm very excited to share that with you there you can see how that jelly pen shows up when you write on a dark background it's just fabulous it really works i'm I have one more video coming out and I will share that with you. I, I'm very excited to do that. I just need to do a few tweaks and then I'll, I'll upload it to YouTube as well. And uh, just thank you. Thank you for sharing your heart with me. Thank you for your comments. I'm very excited to see what you do and I would love to see the art of your heart as well. So just from my home to your home, I, I bless you and I just thank you and, um, and see you next time on the interwebs. Bye.